Hey guys, it's Ben with Myers Woodshop and this is my Shop Tour 2021. Last year after I did the Shop Tour of 2020, I thought to myself, it's not gonna change. Why is this so interesting every year? And every year so far, I have been wrong. It has changed in some ways very drastically. One of the big changes this year is this is gonna be the last shop tour that I do in this shop. And I'm gonna to get to that at the end of this video, but for now, let's take a look inside and see what's changed over this year. All right, there's some things outside that has changed and let's go over the first one. And I'm actually standing on it. You can see, if you look down, I've gotten rid of the wooden ramps that were out here. Uh, they were fine, but one thing I didn't consider when I made it was that moisture comes up wood and goes into the shop and it'll follow that ramp. So the ramps ended up kind of uh, breaking down over time. This was about 48 bags of concrete or so. I did it in two separate stages and Rowdy Roman helped me do this. Check out his channel. Um, but if you come in here, you could see one of the cool things I did was I took a tile, a granite tile, and I put it under the laser and I lasered my uh, logo and it's placed right down in the center of that concrete. So whoever uh, lives here long after I'm gone will know whose wood shop this was. The other thing that I did was over on this side of the shop and for small shops like this one, it helps when you have uh, more space to actually work. So I ended up putting my dust collection out here. I built this little cabinet and inside I have my uh, dust right dust collector from Rockler outside in this cabinet and it pipes out to here. So not only does that help with sound, it also helps with space and storage. So that is the second thing I did this year in 2020, I guess, in the change. Uh, third thing that I did was added these racks, these Bora tool racks to this underneath side, get some of this wood up out of the way. I barely have enough room for the tools. Where am I gonna store wood? It's out here under this lean-to. So that's outside. Those were the changes this year. Let's go inside and check out the inside changes. All right, so coming in the front door, I always use the single door to come in. We're gonna start over on the left side as you walk into the shop. This is usually where I start for the shop tour. So we'll start there. This wall hasn't changed. This little uh, wall with all my finishing nailers and pneumatic stuff. I really don't use much pneumatics. So I'm looking to change out the rest of my pneumatics. But that's what I have here. This is a bag of camera stuff. As you come in, I have some finishing products up here. Um, little odds and ends in here. Any like jigs and tool uh, tools that go on the table saw kind of are up here. The micro jigs and the bow products. Uh, this is a big addition right here to the shop for 2020, 2021, is a fiber laser. This is the 30 watt fiber laser. If you check out my Instagram, if you're not following me, you should be, at Myers Woodshop, uh, also Facebook, at Myers Woodshop. I show off a lot of this. There is more fiber laser videos coming to YouTube, but I really wanted to get like kind of knowledgeable about this before I put that stuff out. But this will do metal. So you've seen my big black and yellow laser, that's uh, CO2, that does organic materials, wood, plastics. This fiber laser, a fiber laser does non-organic. So metals and such is what this will do. Um, check it out on my Instagram, you'll see some cool stuff. This thing literally does lasering in about 10, 15 seconds. Sometimes a blink of an eye, depending on what you're doing. Very cool. So. Below that, it's on a rolling cart because I don't have anywhere to, uh, to put this closer to my computer. It has to be plugged in USB, so I roll it out when I use it and I put it back when I don't. But below that, we have the sanding station. This is all the sanding stuff um, in these drawers. So right here, we have our half size armor tool table. That's because on my CNC, if you checked out that video when I made the enclosure, I took tool, uh, two armor tool benches and uh, connected them together, together for one big table and it was left with a baby uh, armor tool bench which is perfect for this shop because it is very tiny. And if you've been following on Instagram and Facebook like you should, I'm still working on the uh, guitar that is out of uh, walnut flooring and we have some epoxy on the back to create the thickness. So. 
that is a project that's going on right here. If we continue over into the corner, this is a huge change for 2020, 2021. It is now my printer shelf. Before I had the Bora Portamate that held the giant DeWalt chop saw and that ended up being some storage for crap on top. And anytime I wanted to use the chop saw, it took me 30 minutes to get the stuff out, to get the chop saw out and flipped over. And basically I did anything I could to avoid using the chop saw. And that's a problem in the shop. So I sold that, I downgraded. I'll show you the chop saw I have now and where it's at. But for now, that corner became the 3D printing corner. So really quick, what I have over here is I have a Prusa Mini. This is the E-Cube Maker Toy DIY 4-in-1. This is the Artillery Hornet. I have the Prusa SL1. This is a resin printer, and this is the curing and washing station. Below that, I have the Ender 5 Plus, and you can see I modeled my head with my signature glasses. And then over here is the Prusa MK3S. So those are the printers I have currently in the shop. I love them, they're great so far. I'm really happy with the setup, but this is the Prusa, or this is the printer rack over here. Continuing over, it's kind of like the portable storage I have, the DeWalt table, a folding table, when I need more workspace in the shop. And then I have my saw stop right here. This is a 1.75 horsepower. I do have the folding out feed table in the back. It's just folded up right now. And on top of that, I have all of my portable lasers, the OTOR and uh, Laser Pro and the OTOR 1 and rotary. It's just kind of where I have them stored for now. I don't have another place for them, but I'm still working on a video or two for these. So that's coming up soon. If you're watching this uh, before I did them, check out the YouTube, make sure you subscribe so you can see these come out. We look above that, we have my clamp rack. I actually got rid of some clamps because I needed the storage against the wall over here and I didn't use very many. So I kept the best of the best clamps and they're on the storage clamp rack with all of my battery and chargers above that. Up in the rafters, I keep long storage, uh, long wood storage. And then I have some clamps that are longer uh, up there. If we continue over, uh, I changed out the end of my saw stop for a router table. So let me get that out. I sell this little drawer if you have a saw stop. That's on my Etsy but I store this away so I don't poke myself in the small shop. But I put in a router table in the end. So my router table is gone and it's in the saw stop. So if we continue over from there, I have my kind of tool hanger. It was just a shop job that was fast, that does the work. So it's hanging uh, on the wall with just kind of all my tools and battery storage right there. Continuing over in the corner now is my uh, star bond basically rack of CA glue. If you're into 3D printing or woodworking, you'll use CA glue all the time. Starbond is the best. There's a link in the description below if you want to get any Starbond CA glue. I also have the type on wood glue and I have some more clamps, the mini clamps right there. Uh, if we continue over from there, we have the Wobi skateboard, one of my prized possessions. And then when I first got my bigger laser, I made a uh, old school comic book uh, first uh, editions, I lasered some of those and hung them around. Below that, we have the Supermax drum sander. It's the 1632. It's got the folding wings. Below that, we have the Fuji sprayer, the Q5. So that's over here. Over here, I have the Grizzly 14-inch bandsaw with the riser block, and I have my rip blade on this. So this is basically used for straight cuts. Uh, to the right of that, I have the black and yellow OM Tech used to be Orion Motors laser. This is a CO2 laser. It is a 60 watt and its bed is 28 by 20. It's probably one of the best investments I've ever made in my shop. I love lasering. So this may be new this year. It might not have been in my shop last year, but um, this is a great investment. Again, links are in the description. I have the rotary sitting up here if I want to do Yeti cups or anything round in this laser. And I have some wall control walls with, again, like pliers, screwdrivers, you name it, the little clamp stuff that just kind of goes everywhere. That's sitting right here. Above all that on that wall, that's my stain and other effects, epoxy, such uh, is all up there. 
And as we're coming over, we're still on this side of the shop, but we're almost done with this side. We have my levels, my drill bits, and then we have a ladder across the top and, uh, you know, your pullable plug outlet, your air hose. Then we have in the center, we have the WEN air purifier. And then uh, we'll start over on the other side. All right, after that side, we got that one side. This is going back to the original side. We're using the back side of the wall control to hold a bunch of little storages here. We have the hammers and such. Here's the mic arm when I do voiceover work. Uh, we have our tape measures and pencils right here. And then finally, we have my big computer monitor. This is where I do all of my editing and such. And if you email me, message me, Instagram me, I'm probably answering you right in this chair on that monitor. This monitor is brand new to me this year. It is fantastic. If you do any computer work or editing or whatever, get a 34 inch ultra wide monitor. It has changed my life and I never wanna use anything other than that. So I'll leave a link in the description, but lovely, I love it. We have some wall control, uh, Storage up above that, that's holding all the stuff that a computer would use. Um, and then if we come across, we have the TV, the Xbox is hooked up to it. I bought some silicone mats because you always want a workstation that is, uh, we can just peel epoxy off or something like that. So I got a silicone mat. If we keep coming over to the side, I have my Xbox controllers and then I have a big Alexa studio. If you have a shop and you want to hear some awesome sound, I upgraded from the Echo to the Alexa Studio, and it is amazing and very loud and very crisp. So check that out. Uh, finally, I have a Mac over in the corner. So if I need Windows or Mac, I have one of both. Let's go above that. Um, we have the shelf. I have all the board games I play nightly. Uh, usually once a week, I get the guys together. We hang out in the shop and we play board games. Uh, one of our favorite right now is Clank. Legacy, we just uh, finished that. That is an amazing game if you are into board games. I have uh, just, you know, the tools in toolboxes up here, and then I have the Festool stuff above that. And uh, that's kind of what's up there. If you've sent me a sticker, your sticker resides right above it on these rafters. And uh, check out the video and see if you can find yourself. So over on this side, we have another wall of wall control. And of course, storage is very important in a small shop, so I have it packed full. Uh, I have my, my resin for 3D printing. I have all kinds of odds and ends. This is where I keep all my CNC bits. And uh, if it has to do with CNC, it goes in these right here. I have them all separated by up cut, down cut, the size they are, V bits, all that. So one of these works really well for your CNC stuff. Um, up above that, we have some DeWalt stuff, some routers, some fans, lights, and the, and the like. If we keep moving over, I ripped out the um, window that was over on this wall because it wasn't going to work. I had this air unit down in the middle of the wall, and once I built the enclosure, the ultimate enclosure for my Onefinity CNC, this covered up that air unit. And I never opened that window anyway, so I just removed that window we moved the air conditioner up higher so it wouldn't be interfering with anything down low. Also, when you're sitting in the shop and you're playing a board game, it's not blowing directly on you. Um, so that's what I did major this year. But of course, here is the Onefinity CNC. It's uh, the Woodworker Edition. This is the custom enclosure I made with some Plexi, some uh, 8020 aluminum extrusion. And if you want to check out this video, it is one of my videos on YouTube. So below that, I have the planer, the lathe, uh, stuff that I use once or twice a year is down here. And uh, I don't use that very often, but it's the storage. And then um, if we keep going up above that, this is kind of my collectibles as an adult. This are the uh, toys that I always wanted as a kid or as an adult, I'm a nerd and I'm proud of that. So here's all the Mandalorian helmets I've printed. Uh, the Iron Man helmet, if you haven't seen that, this one opens, plays sound. I printed this, coded this. This is pretty awesome. Again, if you're not following me on Instagram and Facebook, you haven't seen this and you're missing out. That's a really cool thing. I should have made a video, but I didn't. 
uh, all the cool stuff as a kid that I love. Batman mobile. Uh, I printed myself my face. Mandalorian ship. Optimus Prime. Voltron. Um, the Skyrim map that I had somebody make. Shout out to When Geeks Craft. Check them out. Um, they make some cool maps and, and the like. So that's up there. And below it, this has changed. I used to keep my 3D printers right here. I only had three at any one time because I didn't have the room for it. But now you can see that I have a uh, tiny bandsaw and this one is used for curves. So if you have the room, have one bandsaw for straight cuts so you don't have to change out the blade every time and one bandsaw for curved cuts. And that's what I did with this. The Ryobi is okay. It's not great, but it's okay and it does the job. This is the new miter saw. It is significantly smaller. And let me tell you why I went with this. It takes up less room. It will cut 99% of what I needed to cut compared to the way, way bigger one. And I can carry this with one hand and place it anywhere. I love this. It is a 20 volt battery from DeWalt. I love it. Check it out. It's fantastic. And then finally, the rigid uh, sander. This thing is a great machine. I recommend it to everyone. Uh, in these drawers, I have odds and ends, electronics, uh, you know, the odds and ends that you always have. This is, here's all my drill bits and uh, router bits and such. So that's what's going on in here. It's kind of like the junk drawers. And finally over here, if you haven't seen this, this is an amazing, amazing piece of art I commissioned. Um, it is my shop and the doors open to reveal me inside. It is amazing. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want one. She makes these on a scroll saw, which is just unbelievable. So and then finally, we're back at the door. This was our score chart for the game we just played. We have April Wilkerson's fraction of decimal. And then over here, we have one last wall control wall with my uh, woodpeckers, uh, rulers and stuff. So it's got some tools here. So that's down below. Let's check up top. Up top hasn't really changed. So we have our larger sheet good storage over here. There's not much up there. As we continue over, this is all the wood and uh, wood stock that I keep in here. And then as we continue over on the very other side, we have just more storage. That's more household storage up there that just, you know, fishing lures and stuff like that, that if you don't have room in your house to put it, it ends up in your shop. So that's pretty much my shop as it ends in February, 2021. All right, here's the information you wanted to know at the beginning of the video. Why is this the final shop tour of this shop? And for one, it's too small. <laughs> I'm not getting out of making. I bought a house. My wife and I bought a house. We are about to move into it. It has a 30 by 50 shop. So I'm gonna give you a sneak peek at the shop at the end of this video. Know that there's a series coming out where I redo that shop. It's pretty much a man's junk place. I'm gonna rip it all out, paint the walls, epoxy the floor, gonna make it into the dream shop. It's gonna be a YouTube series on my channel. So check that out. But let's go over to the shop and see it a quick sneak peek of the state it is right now, right before I start moving in. So here it is, this is the shop. Got two garage doors, uh, unfinished upstairs. But let's go in and take a look at the inside. This is a detached building on its own. So a little bit bigger than my current shop, but let's go in and check it out. Now this is it, just kinda getting the stuff out from the previous owners. We haven't quite moved in yet, but this is the shop. So this is it. This is why there's not a shop tour of 2022, I suppose, uh, in my current shop, because this will be the next shop tour. And actually I'm gonna have a build series. I'm gonna update everything in the shop, turn it into my own. So that's gonna be a full series on my YouTube. So if you enjoy watching shops uh, or homes becoming uh, something that they should be, follow, hit that subscribe, hit a thumbs up, 
if you like this. And I'll see you next time. Bye.